Welcome to Cycle, the program focused on Mongolian business and economy. I'm Batsir Namcher. Today, I'm joined by Economist Inkpire to talk about uh, the current uh, economic situation in Mongolia. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. So, uh, as an economist, how do you see the current uh, status of the Mongolian economy uh, after struggling with the COVID-19 situation and uh, quarantine measures over a year? Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, to explain about the current situation, uh, mm. I need to uh, little bit mention about what's the Mongolian economy. The Mongolian economy is current uh, nowadays about uh, 14 billion US dollars and about uh, 36 billion uh, two Greek, uh, trillion two Greeks. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Mongolian economic structure is very much based on the mining sector and the agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. Together, these two sectors are about 13% of uh, gross domestic product. And both of these sectors are uh, uh, very much dependent on commodity price and environmental factors. That's why its Mongolian ec economy is very much volatile. Mm -hmm. So last 20 years we had uh, many faced many crises, and last one was the, during the world economic crisis uh, 2008 and 2009. Mm -hmm. It was uh, we faced a lot of challenges, and uh, last time nowadays we have challenging next crisis about COVID crisis. It's global challenge. Mm -hmm. So this time is the challenge is a little bit different. It's the basis not about economy, not about business. It's related to the health issues, virus. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to understand this problem, we need to understand what's the this COVID, what's the pandemic disease. Mm -hmm. So we need to first of all uh, clarify uh, reason of behind this crisis. Mm -hmm. So in order to take any measure. We have, first of all, we need to uh, need action against the COVID pandemic disease. That's why we nowadays a lot of talking about vaccination, not only in Mongolia, around the world is the vaccination is the number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, due to the impact of uh, the pandemic, uh, business entities are in unprecedented bad situations. Many of them are still on the brink of uh, becoming bankrupt. Could you share with our viewers some data related to private sector in Mongolia and challenges and difficulties they are facing? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, if we based on the uh, some statistics, statistical numbers, uh, Mongolia nowadays have around two thousand uh, entities registered. Mm -hmm. But uh, end of two thousand twenty, it's the most of them, half of them. Uh, not operating, they close the business mm -hmm. temporarily or long term period. It's the, not only this year, but it's the accumulated data. And about nowadays, about 22% of the old entities uh, temporarily or long term closed. It mm -hmm. means many of the employment, a lot of people unemployed. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, this, uh, during the last year, we have several times did lockdown. Uh, up to now, it's the uh, small business like uh, pawn shops and uh, trading, small mm -hmm. uh, retail traders. Mm -hmm. They have uh, many days close to their business, and they have much, not uh, much uh, uh, own uh, capitals. Mm -hmm. That's why it's the, uh, if we close business, it means very hard for them. Uh, uh, big companies, they have, have some reserves. Mm -hmm. But small companies, small owners, they don't have enough capital. Mm -hmm. That's why after the several lockdown, they very much close to bankruptcy. That's why uh, nowadays uh, government talking about actions to how mm -hmm. to generate more employment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, uh, GDP, uh, Mongolian GDP decreased 5.3%. It's the worst uh, uh, during the last 30 years, worst decrease. Mm -hmm. Uh, what should be the priority for the newly formed government uh, to revive the economy? What do you think? Mm -hmm. So I before mentioned it's about Mongolian economic structure. Mm -hmm. So uh, nowadays we not only have COVID problem, mm -hmm. so we have accumulated problems like budget deficit, foreign debt arrears, 
mm-hmm. and many other issues. That's why we need to understand full picture of the economy. So actions need to be not only a COVID issue. In order to uh, uh, support the economy, revitalize the economy, we need to be make need to be more clearly analysis uh, reason of the all the situation. So uh, compared to other countries, we not have much financial resources. We already re- used the last time uh, international donors resources, many b- very big amount, extended fund facility program from IMF and other donors. So this time we. We cannot hope of such kind of programs from mm-hmm. international donors mm-hmm. because of the many low-income countries are also hoping uh, support from international donors. That's why in Mongolia, in case we nowadays uh, have only rely on own resources. Mm-hmm. So that's why I hope, I think, uh, priority of our Mongolian government, of course, number one is the how to fight with the COVID, and second one about uh, how to support business, business and economy. Third one about uh, employment issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the main three challenges for the mm-hmm. new government. What are uh, your thoughts on the government's uh, comprehensive plan uh, of uh, 10 trillion Mongolian tools mm-hmm. to mitigate the impact of the pandemic and revitalize the economy? Mm-hmm. Yes, recently, about uh, two weeks ago, government and prime minister announced this program. And at this moment, uh, we just uh, have brief information, uh, very short information. I hope uh, related ministries and central bank more working on. I hope we will listen more detailed action, what's behind us this short program. Mm -hmm. So nowadays we heard about uh, six different of actions. First of all, about how to support small and medium uh, enterprises mm-hmm. and also uh, support employment, year of employment and mm-hmm. uh, housing program about 3 trillion to Greeks and second, next one about supporting uh, strategic programs, projects uh, and also uh, biggest one is about uh, central bank, Mongol bank financing, repo financing to increase this uh, uh, mechanism about 2 trillion to Greeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and consist, uh, I understand, about these six programs. And uh, recently also I heard from the central bank people explained how is going on this repo financing program. Mm-hmm. I hope this uh, central bank instruments, it's very important, uh, repo financing and SME financing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just uh, recently central bank announced about the released about 250 billion to Greek to commercial banks mm-hmm. in order to support business. And uh, uh, we need to also more uh, work on this program because mm-hmm. it's not only supporting commercial banks. Mm-hmm. These loans should be distributed to all the entities, not only healthy, healthy companies. Mm-hmm. This program main uh, goal is about support uh, companies who is needed this financial support. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also another uh, uh, issue, not only financial issue, for the companies, but it's about how much we expecting during this year to businesses open or close it. If mm-hmm. we make again kind of lockdowns, it will be very hard for the companies. Companies nowadays is the early the, uh, uh, this year, so companies preparing for the business planning for the full uh, year. Mm-hmm. So if, if the whole country situation is not unstable, how much uh, companies didn't understand how much government uh, behavior during this COVID period, it will be very hard for the companies to make their own business planning. Mm-hmm. So uh, from the government side, also need to be, give more detailed, clearly information the, how uh, government will uh, deal with the COVID de- during the next several months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the government of Mongolia planned to export uh, 42 million tons of coal this year, mm-hmm. right? Um, this target um, is achievable. What do you think? Uh, yes, uh, last, if we look back at uh, statistical numbers, mm-hmm. last three years, uh, we achieved the highest amount of the coal export during the 2019. Mm-hmm. It's reached uh, 26 
1.5 million uh, ton coal export to China. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's changed nowadays? Uh, but last uh, year, it was decreased, not reached 36 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's the reason about the uh, lack of the infrastructure, to exporting infrastructure. So we many years talking about to how to build the railway from the Tabantola to border point, mm -hmm. but it's, it's still not yet established. Not yet uh, we build this railway. We expecting to uh, this project will be end uh, end of the 2022. So another challenge is that now this depend from the all buyers from the Chinese government policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this week Chinese government uh, Chinese parliament talking about next five-year planning. So I heard about uh, this five-year plan also included environmental issue. Mm -hmm. So means Chinese uh, uh, government and uh, the more t uh, taking action uh, for the support environmental issue, how to reduce uh, pollution and PM2.5, etc. Mm -hmm. So means if the government, uh, Chinese government, paying more attention on environmental issue, means they're reducing coal usage, not only in power plant, also the possible to use uh, cooking coals. Mm -hmm. Also, it depends on the international policy, how the acting the Chinese government and the government of other developed countries. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in order to achieve this target, first of all, we need to build very good international level infrastructure. And the uh, uh, second one, we need to be make, make more long-term forecast on the commodity market. We need to be more carefully forecast commodity prices. And nowadays, in the world, the commodity market is very volatile. Even though some, some companies ex expecting to higher prices, but uh, we seeing that the, during this uh, last week was commodity prices very volatile. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if we, uh, not only one or two countries, if we all around the world not uh, successfully end vaccination, so we cannot expect to restore a world global supply chain. So it means we <laughs> all dependent to each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, how do you see the Mongolian economic outlook for the rest of the year, especially conditions of um, a rise uh, in the price of copper and uh, a launch of a national uh, vaccination program, etc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, when uh, uh, during the last year parliament session, Central Bank and Ministry of Finance submitted uh, budget and monetary policy this year. Mm -hmm. So, if we look at this projection, it's very optimistic. Uh, they're expecting about six, more than 6% growth. But in the current situation, I think it's a little bit different. Of mm -hmm. course, it's first to uh, depend about how much we successfully implement vaccination. I think this vaccination is not an easy one because vaccination needed to two doses. Means mm -hmm. it's the about month period to mm -hmm. vaccinate one person. And about vaccination, about two million people. It's not only in Ulaanbaatar, it's still located full countrywide. Mm -hmm. It takes time. Mm -hmm. Even though some countries nowadays talking about vaccination not only takes one year, it's some countries expect two years vaccination. So mm -hmm. it's, it's first challenge. And next challenge about is this commodity market's volatility. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, during the last, uh, we expect next two or three years, we don't much expecting implementation of large projects. Even though it's nowadays we're talking several large projects, mm -hmm. railway, uh, oil refinery, power plant, but all this, this project uh, we ex not yet will be finished up to 2013, mm -hmm. 22, 23. Mm -hmm. So means uh, this year and uh, next year will be we not much expecting the increase of uh, oil export and that's uh, growth of the oil economy will be not much higher. We around expecting maybe around four, five percent. It's uh, so we have several challenges. So uh, government and parliament need to be more careful analysis, more uh, uh, response all these challenges. Also, very fundamental challenge for the Mongolian economist uh, about environmental issue it's, and also foreign debt challenges. All these uh, challenges we need to be 
uh, oh, till this challenge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This year, Mongolia has presidential election. Will the election affect the economy? Yes, unfortunately, uh, international organizations did many analyses about Mongolian political systems and the economic situation. And based on the, all this 20-30 uh, years analysis, international analysis, and it's much uh, political system, it's more affecting our own economy. Mm -hmm. And the uh, expert analysis is saying that this Mongolia is uh, a uh, very uh, uh, tight relationship between political system and economy. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a business cycle for five years. Mm -hmm. Also, this uh, political cycle is also very much affecting our own economy. Uh, during the uh, election year, usually government spending, budget spending increase. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, reached to the budget deficit, more higher budget deficit in the foreign debt. Mm -hmm. So kind of political cycle, it's uh, uh, very bad impact on the economy and business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, our interview is coming to an end. Uh, thank you for coming and thank you for your time. Take care. Thank you for having me. Well, that's all for Cycle. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next week.